Thanks for joining us. I'm Pastor Jen. I'm a children's pastor at River of Life Fellowship in Kent, Washington. I've been serving in children's ministry for over 20 years. And to my right is Michelle Buxton. She is our early childhood ministry director. She's been on staff with us for over 15 years. And to my left is Michelle Quadros. She's our elementary director. She's also been serving in children's ministry for over 20 years. So we're just a couple of veteran children's ministry workers. And we are here today to share with you how to get kids excited about the Bible. Now, before we talk about how to get the kids excited about the Bible, we want to share why we should get the kids excited about the Bible. We all know that the Bible is the inspired word of God, and it's there to help teach, guide, correct, and train us. But we face a huge obstacle when trying to make the Bible something exciting for the kids. Some of the kids in our ministry, they come in for the first time, they've never even heard of the Bible. They've never seen it, they've never touched it, they don't know anything about it. Some kids have heard about the Bible and maybe some stories here and there, but they're still unfamiliar of how it applies to them. And then there's other kids that know the Bible pretty well, have parents that teach it to them and share with them on a daily basis. And so we kind of have a variety of kids. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail later, but let's face it, kids aren't really into reading these days. Uh, they spend most of their time on computers, watching TV, on their electronics, surfing social media sites. Uh, the kids in our ministry would rather record a video and upload it to YouTube rather than read a book. <laughs> And their schedules are so packed from school, sports, and other activities that they come home exhausted and the last thing they want to do is find a quiet corner, grab a book, and try to memorize anything. Well, let's face it, the Bible isn't exactly an easy read. There are some parts, like I said, that they might be familiar with. Maybe they heard it in VBS or Sunday school or some other church event. But for the most part, there's a large part of the Bible the kids haven't even discovered yet. And unfortunately, kids are not really diligent about spending time daily reading their word. Yeah, and I don't think it's just a kid problem, too. Um, it, you know, it comes down to the adults as well. That's so true. I mean, how often do you read your Bible? There was a survey in 2016 where they asked people, how often do you read your Bible outside of a church service or a church event? And the numbers were actually very surprising to me. Uh, only 13% of the people surveyed stated that they read their Bible every day. 29% said they read their Bible once a month. 31% claimed that they only read it a few times a year, like less than four. And 27% admitted that they never read their Bible at all outside of a church service or a church event. And those statistics are for adults. I can't even imagine what they are for kids. Why do you think there's a lack of interest in reading the Bible? Well, I think it's because kids just see the Bible as another book, a very large book and it doesn't make much sense to them. It doesn't talk about people that they know or locations that they're familiar with. Uh, it's filled with big words that they have a hard time reading, let alone even pronouncing. Uh, they haven't discovered that the Bible is God's word and instruction book for them. And in it, he shares who he is, his plan, and how they fit into it. The more time we spend been reading this Bible though we get to know him and grow closer to him unfortunately kids just don't understand that but we can change that we can make the Bible exciting for kids but we can't expect a one-size-fits-all teaching for everybody no we can't how one child may receive information is certainly different than another child and that's where we were talking earlier about the different kids and and some have been going to church their whole life some have just started coming to church some are familiar with the bible and some aren't so when we share god's word with kids we need to understand that they have different levels of understanding their heart conditions are in different places uh, jesus alluded to this in his parable in matthew and where he talked about the four different types of soils. I mean, there's the path, 
the path that's hard and uh, well traveled where the seeds fell and they were just scooped right up by the birds because they didn't take root at all um, because there was a lack of understanding and there's some kids that are like that they just don't understand that the bible is the word of god it's for them to apply in their lives today uh, the second type of soil was the rocky soil and this one is where the seeds planted but the soil is shallow so as soon as the circumstances come you know the sun it's too hot it's beating down uh, that plant just withers up right away well that's like kids that come into our ministry they might hear a truth and um, but they turn around and walk away and just forget it right away uh, how much do they really grasp how much do they really remember from what they were just taught and then the third type is the seed that falls among the thorns and the the thing about that is that things of this world come up and choke it. And that's like the kids that maybe they really do hear truth, they really wanna apply it in their lives, they really do uh, wanna make a change, but as soon as they leave our class, the circumstances, um, maybe trouble comes, maybe kids start picking on them, teasing them, they start getting a little persecuted, uh, and then they turn away from doing that word that they learned. And then fourth, and finally, there's a good soil, and of course, this is where the seed can can grow and produce good fruit where kids understand and receive the word and apply it in their lives. And as we begin to look at how to make the Bible exciting for kids, we need to keep in mind the four types of kids that we're ministering to. We need to understand that they have different heart conditions. They're just at different places in their lives and they're going to receive what we're teaching them um, in different ways. And we need to consider the methods of how we're teaching them and what we're doing um, so that we'll reach all four different types. Remember that you are not responsible to make the seed grow. You are just asked to spread it. But don't sell the kids short. Jesus told his disciples, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. If all we do in class is entertain the kids and make it fun, we'll sell them short. We need to make sure that kids are given the word of God each time they come into our classroom. But there is a way that we can make it memorable for all kids. Yeah, we can get the kids excited about the Bible by making it fun. Um, we can grab their attention, um, get them to participate, adding elements of games and, and activities while we're teaching them. And it's important to make it real. We want it to be relatable to them. We want to show them how the, the people in the Bible are similar to them. And we want to make it last. We want to get the word of God down into the spirits. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. One of my favorite quotes is, if you want kids to be interested in the Bible, here's the first step. Forget about yourself. Focus on the kids and give them what they need, even what they want. If our goal is to make the Bible an open book for kids, we need to stretch ourselves. Michelle, can kids get excited about the Bible? Absolutely. Uh, young kids love books. They love to hold them, flip through the pages, uh, look at the pictures. Uh, even if they can't read the stories, they like to create their own stories out of the pictures and their life experiences. So, you know, even at a young age, um, people think they don't have the capacity, but really they do. Um, um, they just, they're sponges. They are natural learners, and uh, they learn by um, hearing and watching and listening, especially by doing. Okay, hmm. so what are some practical ways we can get young kids excited about the Bible? Well, first of all, we need to, need to make it fun. Um, we need to get kids engaged and excited about the Bible. So when you're teaching, you need to be excited about the Bible. So when you're telling them something, you need to say it like it's the coolest thing they have ever heard in, in, in your entire life. And um, you, you, when you're sitting down, I've seen this before, and I've actually done this, sitting down and, and reading from a lesson plan to the kids, and you just can't keep their attention that way. Um, God's Word is not in a lesson plan. It's in the Bible. And so bring it out and read it and just make, make it exciting for them. Um, and don't be afraid to get down to the, their level. Um, 
we like to get on the floor with a one or two year old and crawl around and make animal noises or march around the room with a bunch of preschoolers trying to knock down the walls of Jericho. Um, you know, if the teacher's involved, that's cool for them. They, they love that. Um, and incorporate games and, um, and activities that will um, encourage scripture memorization and, and, and Bible memory. Um, we do role play in our classrooms. Uh, one time we did the story of Lazarus and brought out some toilet paper <laughs> and let the kids wrap each other up in the toilet paper. I mean, what kid doesn't think it's fun to be a mummy? Uh, and then for a little added element, you know, bust open a can of tuna and let them smell it and see what maybe the tomb smelled like when they opened it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you make it real for the kids? Um, well, in every, everything you do, every activity do, you do, every uh, class time, make sure the Bible is visible. Um, let them hold it, uh, touch it, flip the pages, read it to them, um, read with them. I like to sit and let preschoolers pretend like they're telling me a story. Um, it's fun to see their side of it. And, um, but that just kind of, you know, their senses touching and, and being able to be a part of that. Um, I also um, like to give them opportunity to ask questions and share their side of the story for sure. Um, sharing with them real life uh, scenarios that are age appropriate, asking them um, or using phrases like, um, um, just like when, um, so for instance, just like when the boy shared his lunch, um, I can share my stuff too. Uh, we use small phrases in our classroom, just three or four words. I will share, I can do nice things, I will obey. And we add hand motions to them and repeat it through everything that we do in class so that by the end of the day, they, they know the phrase, they know what it means, and by next, the following week, they're coming back and repeating it to you, and they, they've, they've got it. All right, so how do you make it last for this age group? Even at a young age, you can plant the seed into these kids' hearts um, and make it last. Uh, repetition is key. So sharing a Bible story over and over again, singing a song over and over again, repeating a verse over and over again, just that's what's gonna do it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna in, in, ingrain it into their hearts and, and, and help to make it last. Um, also, you know, if we can get the parents involved, that's huge. So send home a uh, take home page, encourage them to read the Bible with their kids, to um, go over the scripture verse or whatever the main point is for that week. If they can do that at home, if parents are involved, that's huge. Yeah, and you know, young children, they are capable of memorizing scripture even before they're able to read it. Mm -hmm. So all of that is great stuff and it's foundational. It's important. We don't, as we transition to talking about elementary, we don't want to forget these same truths. These same things apply to elementary, but as we, as the kids rather get older, they can kind of cultivate these foundations that they've developed. They can kind of start to develop that. So Michelle, why don't you tell us about that? Well, the first thing that we want to do during class is just like with the younger class, we have to set the correct environment. Your enthusiasm and excitement as a teacher is what is going to draw in all those kids who maybe are scared because they don't know what the Bible says or they don't know the answers. And so we kind of have to entertain them a little bit at this time. We want to have a voice that is interesting and enthusiastic to just draw them in with what we're saying and how we're saying it. And then when it comes to the story, no matter what story you're telling, look for those silly or fun facts or yeah. those interesting mm -hmm. parts of the story that are going to be interesting to a kid. Think like mm -hmm. a kid. Think like a boy. Try to find the <laughs> things that are going to draw the interest of the girls and incorporate those into the story as well as take a detour from the main characters and get the kids to think about some of those secondary characters. What might they be thinking? What are they feeling or experiencing? And get the kids to kind of think about what would you feel like in that position? If we can make the people and the situations real to the kids, yep. the Bible's gonna come alive to them in a way that has never happened before. So we want to also help them to see the stories. 
include some sort of visual, whether it's a silly outfit or a costume, props, even something as simple as pictures for something they may not know or recognize, and then make something unexpected. You're going to have some kids who have heard the story for the first time, some who've been there for five, ten years, <laughs> and they're like, I've heard this a million times. Mm -hmm. So bring something in unexpected so that you can catch everybody's attention and they don't know what's coming up. It's good. So good. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing for making it fun is incentives. Whether your church uses incentive money or candy or small prizes, you want to use something to reward them <laughs> for things like bringing their Bible paying attention during the lesson time so they can answer questions at the end, or even bringing back the take-home page where they did some reading or they answered the questions. But if we can reward them and they're doing those little things long enough, it'll become a habit, and then we're, we're on our way. Yeah. Uh, since the purpose is not just to entertain the kids, what are some things we can do to make it real? To make it real to the kids, we have to give them the opportunity to apply these same Bible stories in their own mm -hmm. life. They have to know that the Bible is real and important for them in their day-to-day -day life. It's great to know that David and Goliath fought and David could win, but what does that have to do with them? How can mm -hmm. they apply that in their own life? So whether it's a memory verse or a story, we have to make the characters real, but we have to help the kids understand what that exactly means for their life. Mm. So we need to give them a way that they can apply it. I like giving the kids one challenge. I ask them, <laughs> one simple challenge, who's willing to go home and show kindness to your sibling? And just ask them to stand up if they want to accept the challenge, but it gives them one simple thing that ties into the lesson that they can go home and do. Hmm. And the last goal we have when teaching the kids about the Bible and making it exciting is how do you make it last? How do you make it last for these kids? So what we want to do is we want to get that head knowledge down into their spirits. And that takes repetition, <laughs> repetition, <laughs> repetition, telling these kids the same thing over and over again. But if we sat them down in the traditional teaching method to get them to learn what they needed to, it would never happen. So we have to get them learning without them thinking about it. We need them to be having fun and learning at the same time. So we want to use games and activities that reinforce our main point and our lesson. And we want to be also teaching them how to use the Bible, which means they have to learn what's in the Bible, how to find it. And a lot of those games you can play each week how to find scriptures, how to find the books. Is it Old Testament? Is it New Testament? And at the beginning, it's a lot of guessing. The kids don't know where the things are. They're going to guess. They're going to be wrong. But as you do it more consistently over and over and give the kids the exposure, they're going to begin to learn. And soon, they'll know the answer instead of just guessing it. But the main priority is memorizing the word. Well, that is all great information. Thank you for sharing, Michelle. I think we should just recap for everybody now. How can we make the Bible exciting for kids? Well, definitely make it fun. Uh, make it exciting. Uh, be enthusiastic during class. Uh, get on the kids' level, you know? Uh, get on the floor, whatever. Make it fun, cool, and exciting. Um, and then also include, include visuals. Um, bring out some props and costumes and just have fun with yep. it. Yeah, and number two, make it real. Make sure that we are helping the kids to understand that the people in the Bible are just like them and that they can apply these truths in their lives every single day. And then also you had shared about helping the kids to navigate through the Bible, to understand the difference between Old Testament and New Testament, how to understand that there's different books and different chapters and find the different verses. And last, we want to make it last. Memorizing scripture is a priority, but we also need to use repetition to get the other things about the Bible and about scriptures into their spirits. Get it out of their heads, into their spirits. And we want to include games and activities so that we can get them learning 
without thinking about it. That's good. And uh, there's one more thing that we haven't mentioned here, and that is prayer. We need to remember to be praying, praying for our children, praying that their hearts would be softened, that the eyes of their understanding would be open to the truths in the word, that they would have a burning desire to learn and understand God's word. Uh, we can prepare and make all the best choices and decisions on how we're going to share the, the word of God and how we're going to teach those Bible stories, but it's God that calls people towards himself. This reminds me of a quote that I was reading about well-intentioned teachers stick with ineffective methods of getting kids to read the Bible because that's just what they know and that's what they've always done. And the result is kids don't feel the Bible's relevant to them and they're certainly not motivated to dive in. That's a great quote. That's so true. We need to constantly be examining ourselves and the way that we're um, teaching these kids, the way that we're presenting the gospel, the word of God to them. Um, just some thoughts to think about as we close today, some questions. Uh, do the kids in your ministry see you reading from the Bible? Are they asked to open their Bibles during class time? And have you helped them learn the structure of the Bible, the different testaments, books, and chapters? And have you shared with the parents how important it is to continue the training at home? And finally, what is one step that you can take this week to get your kids excited about the Bible? Thank you.